Quantum Chains, generated by StoryWave.ai. Chapter 1, Ashes to Innovation. A new dawn crept over Neo Phoenix, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink as the city shook off the dust of yesteryears. In the midst of rejuvenated plains where wild flowers dared to reclaim their territory stood Evelyn Kearns. Her charcoal black hair danced in the gentle morning breeze, and her emerald green eyes were fixed on the pulsing core of her latest creation. Are we ready? Evelyn asked, her voice measured, betraying none of the anticipation that tightened her muscles. Marcus Holt, with his dusty brown hair and a scruffy beard framing his steel gray eyes, gave a nod. All set, gravity maven, he said, his husky voice laced with a touch of humor. His cybernetic arm whirred softly as he made the final adjustments to the intricate apparatus before them. The anti-gravity device, a mesh of gleaming metal and pulsating blue light, hummed with potential. It was a beacon of hope, a symbol of rising from the ashes of a world that had once been on the brink of annihilation. Evelyn stepped forward, her athletic build poised with an air of mystery. Let's defy gravity, she declared, and activated the device. A low rumble vibrated through the earth, and for a moment, the planes around them quivered in protest. The device, resonating with an inner force, lifted a collection of stones and debris, suspending them in a mesmerizing dance midair. Look at it, Marcus. It's working. Evelyn's eyes sparkled, reflecting the groundbreaking phenomenon before her. But the triumph was short-lived. A sudden gale swept across the plains, and the once tranquil sky darkened. Evelyn's holographic data pad flickered with alerts as the environment reacted to the unnatural disturbance. What's happening? Marcus's voice was edged with concern. The planes were not merely a backdrop to human ambition. They were a living, breathing entity, and the balance had been disrupted. Evelyn scanned the data, her brow furrowing. The anti-gravity field, it's affecting the atmospheric pressure. We didn't predict this. The wildflowers bowed under the invisible weight, and a flock of birds took flight, their silhouettes stark against the brewing storm. This was the untamed power of nature, retaliating against the shackles of human innovation. We need to shut it down, Marcus exclaimed, rushing to the controls. But as his fingers danced over the interface, a static charge surged, knocking him back. Evelyn caught him, her own heart racing. Are you all right? Yeah, just a little shock, he said, shaking off the incident. The tumultuous sky seemed to watch them with a gunmetal gaze, echoing the eyes of General Voss, who, at that very moment, observed from a distance. His imposing figure, clothed in old-world military attire, stood as a stark reminder of the world's fragile peace. This technology, it could change the game, he muttered to himself, his gruff voice barely audible above the howling wind. Back at the experiment site, Evelyn and Marcus worked frantically to stabilize the situation, their efforts a testament to human resilience. And in that struggle, the government's interest, once a mere ember, flared into a blaze. As the anti-gravity field powered down and calm returned to the plains, Evelyn's mind raced with possibilities. The environmental upheaval was a setback, but also a sign. Nature had spoken, and she was determined to listen. As the day waned, a message arrived, encrypted with patterns of stars and constellations. Seraphis Delphoria, the star whisperer, had been observing from afar. Their voice, melodic and soothing, carried an offer of alliance and a warning. Evelyn Kearns, your pursuit of anti-gravity is a leap for humankind. Yet tread carefully, for the balance of nature is delicate, Seraphis conveyed, their violet orbs reflecting a wisdom beyond years. Evelyn nodded, accepting the wisdom of the Gallian ambassador. This was the beginning of a new chapter, where human ambition and nature's will would have to coexist. As the light of day gave way to the stars, Neo Phoenix ignited with whispered conversations of the future. There, amidst the ashes of the old world, innovation sparked the chains of a new era, ready to soar into the quantum beyond. Chapter 2. The Gravity of Hope. The sun cast its first light upon Neo Phoenix, washing over the remnants of a world reborn from the ashes. Evelyn stood in her makeshift lab, the epicenter of a discovery that was about to reshape humanity's horizon. Her fingers danced across the surface of her data pad, the device still warm from the previous day's trials. Marcus watched her from across the room, his rugged frame leaning against a work table cluttered with tools and components. People are talking, Evelyn, 
They're saying you've reversed the very pull of the earth, he said, his voice tinged with both admiration and a hint of caution. Evelyn's gaze remained fixed on the screen. It's not just talk. We've opened Pandora's box and there's no going back. As the news of Evelyn's discovery spread like wildfire, the city buzzed with a mixture of hope and trepidation. Conversations erupted in marketplaces and digital forums, everyone pondering the gravity of what had been unveiled. Could this be the key to restoring the planet, to reaching the stars, or was it a harbinger of fresh calamities? The public's reaction was a storm of clashing opinions. Some lauded the breakthrough as a miracle, while others feared the ripple effects of such power. Whispers of the unrest reached the ears of General Voss, whose salt and pepper hair was a testament to his years of military service. He stood tall and unyielding, his gunmetal blue eyes reflecting a mind at work. We can't let this tech remain unchecked, Voss declared, stroking his stiff full beard. His voice carried the weight of command, decisive and unwavering. Evelyn and Marcus were deep in discussion when the roar of engines shattered the morning's tranquility. A military convoy, led by General Voss, rumbled toward their location. Soldiers, stern and silent, disembarked, their presence an unspoken demand for control. Voss approached, his imposing figure casting a long shadow. Evelyn Kearns, he addressed her, the government thanks you for your service. But this technology, it now falls under military jurisdiction. Evelyn's posture remained unchanged, her confidence unshaken. General, my work is for the betterment of all, not to be weaponized. Their exchange was cut short by a serene hum that filled the air. Seraphis, the star whisperer, materialized before them, their luminous strands of hair and constellation patterned skin aglow. The Galleon ambassador's arrival brought a hushed awe to the crowd. General Voss, Evelyn Kearns, Seraphis greeted, their voice a symphony of calm. The gravity of your discovery is felt across galaxies. It must be nurtured with care, for it holds the potential to unite or to divide. Voss, taken aback by the alien's sudden appearance, regained his composure. Your interest is noted, Ambassador. However, this is a matter of Earth's security. Evelyn stepped forward, her mind clear. Perhaps it's time we see it as more than that, General. This isn't just about Earth anymore. The tension between human authority and the promise of a wider universe hung heavy in the air. The planes, once silent witnesses to humanity's struggle, now bore the marks of a nascent harmony between nature and the cosmos. As the day ended, Conversations continued under the watchful eyes of a world not yet fully understood. The gravity of hope pulled at the hearts of all, a force as potent as the technology that stirred beneath the starry sky of Neo Phoenix. Chapter 3 The Weightless Siege The dusty ground of Neo Phoenix trembled under the march of General Voss's forces. Tanks and troops, armed with high tech gear, advanced on the lab where Evelyn and Marcus worked to safeguard their invention. Evelyn peered through the reinforced window, her emerald eyes sharp and calculating. The hum of the anti-gravity device, a soft lullaby amidst the chaos, filled the air around her. Looks like Voss isn't waiting for an invitation, Marcus remarked, his cybernetic arm clicking and whirring as he loaded it with tools that might be needed in a hurry. Then we won't be handing him one, Evelyn replied with determination. She turned to the small group of defenders who had gathered, fellow scientists and engineers who believed in the potential of their work. This technology is for all of humanity, not just those with the mightiest guns. Outside, Voss's voice boomed through a megaphone, his tone as firm as the steel of the machines he commanded. Evelyn Kearns, surrender the device or we will take it. Evelyn grabbed her data pad and began typing furiously, her fingers a blur of motion. Marcus, we need to initiate the defense protocol. Marcus nodded and joined her at the console, his steel gray eyes focused. On it, he said. Together, they activated the lab's defense system, a network of barriers and energy shields powered by the very technology Voss sought to control. The first wave of Voss's forces met an invisible wall that sent them reeling back. Confusion spread through the ranks as gravity bent in ways they hadn't thought possible. But the advantage was short-lived. A loud crash echoed as an armored vehicle burst through a section of the barrier, and troops poured into the lab. In the ensuing chaos, Marcus fought bravely, his cybernetic arm a blur of defensive ingenuity. 
But the numbers were overwhelming, and he was taken captive, the soldiers dragging him away. Evelyn watched, her heart pounding, as her friend disappeared into the convoy. She knew what she had to do. Stay here and hold them off, she instructed her team. I'm getting Marcus back. Using her data pad, she plotted a stealthy route through the underbelly of Neo Phoenix, where the shadows of ruined buildings provided cover. Seraphis's words echoed in her mind, reminding her of the delicate balance she had to maintain, even in this moment of crisis. Sneaking past checkpoints and eluding patrols, Evelyn's athletic form moved with precision. She reached the temporary holding facility where Marcus was kept. The building, a relic of the old world, loomed over her, its walls holding the secret to her friend's freedom. Inside, Marcus sat in a makeshift cell, his rugged features set in a grim line. Took you long enough, he quipped as Evelyn appeared, disabling the lock with a device she had crafted on the fly. Thought I'd let you enjoy the hospitality, she replied, the corners of her mouth twitching with the ghost of a smile. Together, they made their escape, moving like phantoms through the corridors. As they reached the safety of their lab, the defenders cheered, their spirits lifted by the successful rescue. The battle for the anti-gravity device was far from over, but Evelyn and Marcus had proven that their resolve was as weightless as their invention, capable of rising above any siege. As night fell, the lab stood as a beacon of resistance against the backdrop of a city caught between fear and wonder. The weight of hope remained strong, even as the forces of nature and humanity continued their delicate dance. Chapter 4. The Galleon Gambit In the stillness of a neo-phoenix morning, Seraphis, their skin shimmering like a starlit sky, addressed a gathering within the high-ceilinged atrium of the city council. Evelyn and Marcus stood amidst the assembly, their eyes locked on the Galleon ambassador. People of Earth, Seraphis began, their melodic voice resonating through the chamber. Our intent is to share the cosmos with you, to lift your gaze to the boundless heavens. Evelyn leaned closer to Marcus. This could change everything, she whispered, her eyes reflecting the violet orbs of Seraphis. Marcus nodded, his cybernetic arms subtly whirring in agreement. If people are willing to listen, he murmured back. Meanwhile, General Voss's influence was like a shadow creeping across Neo Phoenix. His voice, gruff and insistent, echoed from screens and speakers in every corner of the city. Do not be deceived, he cautioned. This alien help comes with a price. The city was a cauldron of opinions. Many citizens swayed by Voss's words, their fear of the unknown a powerful deterrent against the promise of the stars. In a secluded room, where the air was charged with urgency, diplomats from Earth sat with galleon envoys. The talks were a delicate dance of words and wills, each side measuring the other. Evelyn, present as an observer, noted the tension like an undercurrent beneath the surface of a calm sea. In a twist of secrecy, Voss was not merely content with sowing doubt. His scientists were busy at work, their hands crafting a secret weapon designed to disrupt anti-gravity fields. His plan was to ensure Earth's defense by any means necessary, even if it meant turning their backs on a future among the stars. As the days folded into nights and back again, a troubling discovery shook Evelyn to her core. A spy, a voice within their ranks, was leaking information to a rogue faction among the galleons. She confronted the suspect, her voice steady. Why betray your own kind? The accused, a young engineer with eyes as sharp as flint, didn't flinch not betrayal, survival. Some galleons don't want Earth rising to challenge them, he confessed. Evelyn and Marcus exchanged glances, the weight of this new threat pressing upon them. We need to act, she said, her resolve hardening like steel. With a covert plan, they moved to counter the spy's treachery. Evelyn's quick thinking and Marcus's inventive prowess combined to set a trap, luring the rogue galleon faction into the open. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the city, the trap was sprung. A burst of light and energy, like a miniature supernova, enveloped the traitors, rendering their technology useless. The rogue galleons were exposed, their gambit thwarted. The chapter closed with Neo Phoenix at a crossroads, the citizens contemplating the gravity of their choices. The silent plains beyond the city limits stood as a reminder of Earth's resilience, the natural world watching and waiting for humanity's next leap into the unknown. Chapter 5. Beneath the Veil of Stars 
the glimmering dome of the observatory stood like a silent guardian amid the whispering plains of Neo Phoenix. Inside, Evelyn and Marcus huddled over a constellation of screens, each flickering with data and star charts. Can you believe it, Marcus? They were plotting right under our noses. Evelyn's voice was steady, her eyes reflecting the cold light of betrayal. Marcus ran a hand through his dusty brown hair, his gaze fixed on a looping hologram. Yeah, but we've got them now. This proof is solid, he grumbled, his cybernetic arm making clicking sounds of agreement. The rogue faction's plans were as clear as the night sky outside. To sever the fragile ties between humans and galleons. To keep Earth isolated and dependent. But now, armed with the truth, Evelyn and Marcus had a chance to mend the fraying trust. We need to show this to Seraphis, Evelyn decided, her determination radiating like the luminous strands of a galleon's hair. Marcus nodded, his steel-gray eyes flickering with resolve. Let's not waste any time, then. Their footsteps echoed through the observatory's halls as they departed, the urgency of their mission propelling them forward. They found Seraphis in the council chamber, a place where decisions that shaped futures were made. The ambassador's violet orbs met theirs with an unreadable expression. Evelyn, Marcus, what brings you here with such haste? Seraphis inquired, their voice a tapestry of celestial calm. Evelyn stepped forward, offering the hologram as evidence. We've uncovered the rogue faction's agenda. It's a ploy to keep us divided, she explained, her words carrying the weight of their dire situation. Seraphis's gaze swept over the hologram, their expression morphing into one of deep concern. This is troubling. We cannot let this schism grow. But their revelation was cut short by an ominous rumble that shook the very foundations of the chamber. Outside, the night had turned chaotic as Voss's weapon, a behemoth of technology, deployed its anti-gravity disruption field. The device, monstrous and unyielding, stood like an iron giant, its presence casting a long shadow over the city. Voss's voice boomed from its speakers, sowing seeds of doubt and discord. See the danger of foreign allegiance, he roared, his propaganda piercing the hearts of the uncertain. Evelyn's fists clenched at her sides. We can't let fear win. We have to act now. Marcus turned to her, his face set in grim lines. I have an idea, but it's risky, he said, outlining a desperate plan to expose the conspiracy by hijacking Voss's communication network. Together, they embarked on their covert mission, slipping through Neo Phoenix's alleys and byways like shadows beneath the veil of stars. Dodging patrols and evading detection, they reached Voss's command center, a fortress of steel and stone. Inside, they worked with a feverish pace, Marcus's cybernetic arm interfacing with the control panel as Evelyn kept watch. The moment of truth arrived, and with a flurry of keystrokes, the truth was broadcast for all to see, the holographic evidence of the rogue faction's deceit, unraveling the web of lies. The city, once teetering on the edge of panic, found its footing as the truth shone brighter than any propaganda. The rogue faction's plan lay exposed, and the bond between Earth and the Galleons, though strained, held fast. As dawn approached, bringing with it the promise of a new beginning, Evelyn and Marcus stood side by side, their mission accomplished. The weapon, now silent and defeated, no longer threatened the sky that stretched above them, a canvas of infinite possibilities. Chapter 6. The Penumbra Protocol In the heart of Neo Phoenix, Beneath the relentless gaze of a noonday sun, Evelyn and Marcus stood shoulder to shoulder. The air was charged with tension, the city's fate teetering on the edge of a knife. Evelyn's eyes, vibrant as the verdant plains that stretched beyond the city, scanned the horizon. Voss's weapon loomed like a dark monolith, its silhouette casting a long shadow across the land. We can't let him do this, Marcus said, his voice a determined growl. His fingers danced over his cybernetic arm calibrating it for the conflict ahead. Evelyn nodded, the sleek surface of her data pad reflecting the determination in her gaze. We won't. It's time for the Penumbra Protocol. The ground rumbled as Voss's forces advanced, a tidal wave of metal and might. In the sky, Galleon ships descended, their hulls gleaming with an ethereal glow. The alliance between Earth and the Galleons, once a fragile hope, now stood as humanity's last bastion. Today, we decide our destiny. Evelyn's voice rang out, clear and resolute, rallying her defenders. Marcus turned to the ragtag group of engineers and volunteers, their faces set with the same resolution. Let's show them what we're made of. 
The battle erupted in a cacophony of energy blasts and the roar of engines. Evelyn and Marcus, with the help of their Gallian allies, fought valiantly against the onslaught. In the thick of the fray, a figure emerged, their stance betraying a familiarity. The spy, their identity now unveiled, was none other than a trusted advisor, someone who had walked alongside Evelyn and Marcus in the early days of their endeavor. You? Evelyn gasped, her voice a mix of shock and betrayal. Yes, me, the advisor replied, a sneer twisting their features. I believed in Earth's strength alone. In a desperate gambit, the advisor lunged, attempting to sabotage the anti-gravity device. A galleon, their figure a blur of motion, intercepted, their sacrifice ensuring the technology's safety. As the battle reached its crescendo, Seraphis appeared, their presence a calming force amid the chaos. It is not too late for peace, they implored, their voice a soothing counterpoint to the savagery of the conflict. Foss, his face a mask of determination, hesitated. The weight of his actions, the realization of what was at stake, seemed to dawn on him. What have I become, he muttered, his resolve faltering. The tide turned as Voss's soldiers, witnessing their leader's doubt, ceased fire. Whispers of ceasefire spread like wildfire, and slowly, the tumult subsided. Evelyn approached Voss, her data pad clasped firmly in hand. We can work together for Earth, for the stars. Voss met her gaze, his own eyes reflecting the vastness of the cosmos. Lead the way, he said, his voice no longer commanding, but asking. As the dust settled, the city of Neo Phoenix, battered yet unbroken, stood as a testament to the resilience of its people and their allies. The alliance held not just in battle, but in the shared dream of a future among the heavens. Chapter 7. Quantum Awakening In the once tense streets of Neo Phoenix, the clatter of construction now echoed, a symphony of renewal as the city healed its scars. Amidst the clink of metal and the hum of machinery, Evelyn stood surveying the progress, a blueprint hologram spinning gently beside her. Marcus, wiping the sweat from his brow with a greasy hand, approached with a grin. Never thought I'd see the day we'd be rebuilding with Galleon Tech, he said his voice rich with the gritty undertones of hard work and satisfaction. Evelyn turned to him, her green eyes bright. It's a new era, Marcus. Humans and galleons, working side by side. Nearby, a group of children played among the blossoming gardens that now thrived in the heart of the city, their laughter a reminder of the innocence that had endured through the darkness. A solemn gathering took shape around a newly erected monument, a spire reaching for the heavens, inscribed with names of those who had given everything. Seraphis, standing tall and ethereal among the crowd, led the tribute. We honor the brave, Seraphis intoned, their voice a gentle breeze that seemed to carry the weight of history. Their light guides us forward. Evelyn joined the assembly, her heart heavy yet hopeful, as she listened to the names being read. A silence fell, a shared moment of remembrance and respect. The sun dipped low, casting a warm glow over the city as the grand ceremony commenced. Dignitaries from across the galaxy gathered their diverse forms a tapestry of life amidst the stars. Voss, now a figure of peace rather than war, stood among them, his posture reflecting a newfound humility. Evelyn, dressed in the formal attire befitting the occasion, stepped onto the dice, the murmur of the crowd fading into anticipation. Today, we join a community beyond our wildest dreams, she began, her voice steady and clear. Together, we reach for a future unbound by gravity or fear. Applause erupted, a cascade of hope and excitement, as the flag of Earth was unveiled alongside the emblems of the Galleon organization, a symbol of their united path. Amidst the cheers and celebrations, Seraphis approached Evelyn, their violet gaze holding a depth of wisdom and an offer of adventure. Evelyn, your vision has brought us here. Will you serve as Earth's ambassador to the stars? The question hung in the air, and Evelyn felt the gravity of the choice before her. She looked to Marcus, who nodded in encouragement, his cybernetic arm giving a thumbs up. With a deep breath, Evelyn answered, I will, for Earth, for the future. As night fell, the city of Neo Phoenix shimmered with lights and the soft glimmer of distant stars. It stood as a beacon, a testament not to the endurance of spirit, but to the tangible strides taken by its people toward a tomorrow filled with promise and unity. The dawn of the quantum awakening had arrived, and with it, the unshackling of chains that once bound humanity to a solitary world. Chapter 8, Horizons Unbound, 
Evelyn stood at the heart of the Galactic Council's Grand Assembly, the vast chamber alive with the buzz of myriad species, each a unique thread in the fabric of the cosmos. High above, the transparent ceiling revealed the swirling dance of distant galaxies, a canvas of infinite exploration stretched out before her. Friends of the stars, Evelyn began, her voice echoing with clarity, today marks not an end, but a beginning. Beside her, Marcus nodded, his dusty brown hair catching the ambient light, cybernetic arms subtly gleaming with the reflection of a thousand suns. His eyes sparkled with pride, a testament to their shared journey. A murmur of assent flowed through the assembly, as beings of all shapes and sizes leaned in, their attention riveted on the human who had bridged worlds. Seraphis, standing tall and serene, their skin a tapestry of living constellations, smiled at Evelyn, a silent nod of support. You've shown us that even the darkest night will yield to the dawn. A dignitary from across the stars spoke, their voice a harmonious blend of tones. Evelyn's heart swelled with the gravity of the moment. Together, we'll chart new paths, face the unknown, and prove that our chains are only as strong as we allow them to be. Applause rippled through the chamber, like a wave crossing an ocean, carrying with it the promise of unity and the thrill of discovery. Back on Earth, the unveiling of the monument commenced. It was a beacon of triumph, a towering spire etched with images of Earth's journey. From the first faltering steps out of the rubble, to the handshake that sealed their galactic fate. The people of Neo Phoenix gathered, their faces upturned not just to the monument, but to the sky beyond. Voss, who once epitomized the old fears, now stood among the crowd, his expression softened, reflecting a newfound hope. Who would have thought, he said to no one in particular, that we'd stand together, looking up with the same wonder? Children scampered around the base of the monument, their laughter a melody that spoke of a future unshackled by the mistakes of the past. They played tag, their game a mimicry of the planets orbiting a star, their joy infectious. Marcus, back on Earth for the ceremony, watched the children with a broad smile. They're the real dreamers, the ones who'll take the next steps for all of us, he said to a fellow engineer, his voice tinged with optimism. The engineer, her eyes reflecting the monument's grandeur, nodded and we'll build the ships to take them there, to the horizons unbound. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the plains, the stars began to appear, one by one. They twinkled like distant lighthouses, guiding the way for the travelers who would soon venture forth. Evelyn's message from the Galactic Council reached Earth, broadcast for all to hear. Her words, imbued with the spirit of adventure, resonated with every heart that dared to dream. And so, as we take our place among the stars, let us remember the resilience that brought us here, the unity that binds us, and the endless horizons that now beckon. From Neo Phoenix to the farthest reaches of the galaxy, we rise together. The night sky, once a ceiling to contain humanity's ambitions, had become a gateway, an invitation to the infinite voyage that lay ahead. The chains of gravity, of fear, of doubt, had been broken, and now the cosmos awaited, Horizons unbound and beckoning with the soft whisper of the void. Explore. Thank you for listening. Subscribe now and visit our website, storywave.ai, to start creating your own generative audiobooks today. Storywave is the only true on-demand entertainment portal 